Hello, and good morning, all. I'm going to talk about Sweden and how they are doing it better than the United States when it comes to this pandemic. Uh, and I hope everyone else agrees with it. Sweden's taking a different approach to the pandemic and a bid to save lives and not overwhelm the healthcare system systems. Countries have chosen different measures to confront COVID-19. At the height of Italy and Spain's outbreaks, people could not leave their homes. In the UK, they could leave their home an hour a day for exercise and to get groceries. In the US, activities vary from state to state. Nevada, the streets of Vegas are empty, while in Southern California, some of the beaches are full. Even amidst the variation, Sweden stand on its post of the pandemic is a lot, a lot different. The country, the country's primary schools have remained open. Restaurants too, though congregating at a bar is discouraged and tables are set farther apart. Why can't we do that here? It makes so much sense. Those who can are encouraged to work from home, but nightclubs are, can operate as long as the manager ensures that people keep an arm distant from one another. So no dance, uh, yeah, even dancing, no slow dancing. Sweden, Sweden's chief epidemiologist, Andrews Tegnell, who enjoys a sort of celebrity sta status in this country for his unflappable calm says, the strategy seems to be working. We might have reached a peak and we are on the plateau, he said, briefing on April 15th. On April 26th, Prime Minister Isabel Levin defended the strategy to the BBC. Sweden views COVID-19 as a marathon, not a sprint, she said, and warned that citizens in countries with more extreme measures may tire of staying at home. Yes, we are. We're getting real pissed off at staying home. The Swedes focused a different field than the rest of the world. Citizens take responsibility for social distancing, and the government keeps most of society functioning. That's how it should be. There are some rules. High schools and universities are closed. Gatherings of more than 50 people are banned, and people over 70 and those who feel ill are encouraged to stay home. Okay, that's good. But businesses remain open, and children who would otherwise need care are in school. Makes sense. But no, governments are not, don't know how to use sense. Citizens been, seems to be taking their responsibility serious. Residents, residents point out that they are practicing social distancing with elderly, isolated, and families mostly staying home, apart from kids in school. Setting mapper statistics indicate that an almost 75% drop in mobility in Stockholm travel over the Easter weekend dropped more than 90%. And the government did not tell ski resorts to close for e Easter, a popular ski holiday time. But the resorts closed anyway. Levin told the BBC, "It's a myth that Sweden does not take has not taken serious steps. No, they allow people to decide what they're going to do instead of being uh, authoritarian. This is what you must do. You cannot do this. You cannot do that. We should do this." But whether the strategy is working depends on which metric you look at and how you interpret it. By the numbers, at the time of the publication, Sweden had 18,640 cases and almost 2,200 deaths. That makes the country 217 deaths per million people significantly higher than the neighbor Norway, Finland, Denmark, whose population are about half Sweden's but lower than Belgium, Italy, UK, Netherlands. In addition to the higher death rate, both absolute and relative terms compared to Denmark, Norway, Sweden had a high rate of infection and deaths in elderly homes, where more than half the country's COVID-19 deaths have occurred. That old people, that old die easy. Duh, man. In Norway, which has a similar social safety net, Rates have been much lower, uh, cause uh, and when they finally let people out, deaths are gonna skyrocket. 
while it represents a significant defeat in the uh, for the country that prides itself on democratic socialism, Tegnell said the problem is due to weakness in the social safety, not not the canovas, not the response. It is the failure of our overall strategy, but it is a failure to protect our elderly who live in care homes, she said. But Sweden's healthcare system has not been overburdened a key goal of countries that have been that have chosen lockdowns. Plenty of ICU beds are free, she said. The country more than double its ICU capability to over 1,000 beds. Currently, 550 are occupied. Meanwhile, there are no thought debates on how to reopen society and whether there will be a second wave because society has largely remained open. And people got a little, got where well, it was real mild, got the antibodies, and now they can go about. Sweden's economy is still expected to be hit hard, according to the finance minister. GP, GDP could shrink by 10% this year, and unemployment could raise to 13%. And what is ours? Like 20% now? Because everything's shut down? Sweden is an export-led economy and that's dependent on global economy. That has effectively shut down. Levin, the Prime Minister, said 90,000 people had filed unemployment in the last four to five weeks. Claims in Norway are far higher and on, on a relative basis, suggesting there has been less of an economic hit in Sweden. Yes, you let people work, they're going to work. Perhaps the strongest indicator of success of the Swedish strategy would be the country's ability to achieve herd immunity, the protection that emerges as the virus makes its way through the population. The more people who gain immunity to the virus, the fewer potential vectors of exit to spread the virus. Patrick Valence, the UK chief scientific officer, has said that he that it said that about 60% of the population needs to be infected to build hum herd immunity. I heard 70 to 80%, but 60% is kind of low. I, I would still say about 70% minimum. But the idea of herd immunity is contingent. We don't know how long that immunity will last and shouldn't instill some doubt about the approach, said Bolin. Kale, the mathematician biologist who studies infectious disease dynamic, dynamics at the University of Edinburgh. The Netherlands and UK initially followed a herd immunity approach and quickly U turned after projection showed that the cases were sore and overwhelmed the health system. Uh, Sweden showing it did it. Take note and says herd immunity is not Sweden's strategy. Herd immunity is not a policy. Is a status you can achieve, Tegnell said. We want as few people to get infected as possible at a slow pace so the healthcare system can cope. Tegnell said that in a briefing that the country's policies in a pandemic were informed by science, but also by the way Swedes have always valued independence. It's a long tradition that worked very well, said Tegnell, but not everyone is on board with this approach. Uh, yeah, so it's working for them. It could work for us. So please, um, let's do this. And if you, uh, let me, why don't you tell me what you think about this, uh, how Sweden's doing. I'm also going to link the article down below so everyone can read this. Because it's uh, super long and I'm not going to spend another 10 minutes reading it. Uh, and if you made it this far, please hit the like button, subscribe if you like what I'm doing, and share my videos to let people know there's another way of doing it. I always have fun, be safe, and be good. Bye-bye.